Hello everybody and welcome to all our participants worldwide gathered today to our webcast Automotive Lighting from basic car functional to distinctive and high value features. This free webcast is powered by your group. Hi, I'm David Jordan, Senior Global Sales Support Manager for Global, sorry, for your group, and I will guide you during the webcast. This webcast will analyze the evolution of lighting technologies and application, the recent acquisition among the lighting tier one, and the possible convergence between lighting and sensing. First, I would like to introduce and welcome our free speakers, all part of your group. Pierre Goulet, Senior and Market Technology Analyst at Your Intelligence. Wilfried Theron, Department Director at System Plus. And Olivier Andrieux, Mechatronic System Architect at Piseo. So you can see uh, the different bios on the screen. Each presentation will last approximately 15 minutes, and at the end of the webcast, we'll have a Q&A session of about 10 minutes. So before we get started, um, we would like to remind you that you have the possibility to ask questions to our speakers during all the live events. You can use the Q&A box at the left button of the screen. The questions uh, will be answered after the presentation. And in case uh, we have no time to answer all the questions, we will follow up with you by email. By the way, do not hesitate to fill in the survey. It will be very helpful for us. Thank you very much. To conclude, this live event is recorded and you will receive tomorrow an email with the link to access the video of the recorded session. Now, let's start the webcast and begin with Pierrick's presentation. Pierrick, the floor is yours. Thank you, David, for the introduction. So, hello, everybody. I'm Pierrick Boulet. So, today I will speak about the evolution of automotive lighting uh, toward distinctive and high value features. So, the agenda of today so, I will start to give some context about automotive lighting. Then, I will give a few trends about body lighting and rear combination lamps. And I will focus my talk on front lighting. And I will conclude by a market forecast and uh, key takeaways. For the context, so just to give the, the, the scope of automotive exterior lighting function, there are plenty of uh, lighting application in cars. Basically, we can split it into three categories. So body lighting uh, with many applications like small lamps, uh, fog lamps, illuminated grill, uh, lit logo, or the first stop light application, uh, rear lighting uh, with rear combination lamps, and the front lighting uh, with headlamps. Um, in, in, uh, in, in automotive, uh, there is this new trend to integrate uh, lighting application uh, on the front side of the car. And, and you can see that car manufacturers are uh, integrating more than ever uh, lighting modules uh, all around the car uh, to give their vehicle uh, a unique character and also to implement their lighting solution. And in this context, the, the body lighting application is an important differentiator for car manufacturers. Uh, and this is expected to continue uh, with the car electrification uh, because uh, uh, with, with the, the, the car electrification, uh, there is uh, a less a reduced need uh, for cooling uh, compared to traditional car with, ice, with a classical engine. And the, 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 the front panel uh, can, can be used uh, to integrate uh, lighting functionality and the front lighting is becoming more and more horizontal. Uh, so the front panel could be used to integrate more lighting, as I was mentioning, but also to integrate uh, more sensors uh, for that could be used uh, for automated vehicles. Well, 
when we look at body lighting, uh, as I was mentioning, there are different applications. Some of the applications are purely functional applications, uh, like fog lamps, uh, small lamps on side mirrors, for example, or the first stop lighting on the rear side. Uh, but there are new applications that uh, that are emerging uh, since uh, a few a few years, um, like uh, the the grill illumination, the the lit logo, uh, or near field image projection, and, and this type of application uh, can be used uh, for different purposes. Uh, we can clearly see that the GRL. Uh, functionality is used for by OEMs for the lighting signature uh, as well as the, the, the lit logo on the front of the car. But there are other applications like near field image projection or the, the grill illumination that could be used to, to personalize for, for personalization lighting. Uh, and that can be used uh, in some kind of, uh, of welcome scenario or farewell scenario uh, when the, the engine is turned off. And this is where there is more freedom to implement uh, new functionalities for, for tier ones and OEMs. If we look at the, the rear combination lamps, uh, there are two main trends. So, uh, on the uh, historical part, the, uh, the rear combination lamps were quite compact uh, with, let's say, uh, functional application. But now we see two trends. Uh, so, one trend is to have extended lighting, uh, as lighting as well is becoming more and more horizontal. Uh, from the left to the right with uh, a light strip using light guides, for example, uh, or to have advanced communication features uh, to communicate with other road users, for example, with this uh, uh, stop uh, pictogram with, uh, or some kind of low resolution display, or to uh, communicate with the, uh, the, uh, the owner to display the uh, the charge status of an electric vehicles. Uh, and the main application of uh, advanced communication in rear lamps will be to, to communicate with, uh, uh, with the road user to avoid accident. For example, uh, with, uh, with cyclists or pedestrian, uh, when the, uh, the, the driver will open his door or, or to, to, to uh, uh, to tell uh, a potential danger uh, for, for the other road user. So if we move to uh, front lighting, which is the uh, main uh, application in automotive lighting, uh, I would like to start with uh, the LED matrix lighting application. So the, the first launch of uh, LED matrix uh, headlamp was done in, uh, in 2013 uh, by Audi uh, with Hela as a tier one. Uh, basically, uh, the, the LED matrix headlamp, uh, the, the beam chipping is achieved by, by split, splitting up the uh, high beam into, uh, into a sub, uh, let's say, sub beam using. Uh, different uh, reflectors. For example, in the case of the Audi A8 uh, in 20, uh, 2013, uh, there, were, there were 25 LEDs uh, which were uh, individually addressable uh, so that the, the, the beam could be, uh, could be split into, uh, into different parts uh, and uh, the, the LEDs could be either, let's say, turned off uh, or dimmed uh, to avoid glaring other road users. The idea is that the, uh, the driver could continuously drive using a high beam so that he could see uh, still far away uh, to, uh, to improve uh, the safety in night condition. 
So LED matrix lighting, how it works, uh, it is much more complex than basic uh, lighting, uh, as it is a mix of lighting module, sensors, and uh, processing and software. So for the lighting part, there is for sure the LED matrix part. It could be used to control the beam uh, or to have uh, dynamic band lighting. You could use a high resolution uh, lighting module as well. Uh, for the sensing part, uh, it is taking in consideration uh, different sensors. For example, the camera could be, could take also in consideration the, the rain sensor, light sensor, the uh, steering wheel angle, uh, the vehicle speed, and so on. Uh, but you have to, 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 to remind that the camera, the forward ADAS camera, is the main sensor used for, for, um, for LED matrix headlamp. And in terms of computing processing, there is uh, a sensor fusion. So to compute all the data uh, coming from the different sensors and create the uh, optimal uh, light distribution. Uh, so this is uh, controlled by software uh, and this, uh, this light uh, distribution is translated to actuate the light module. And in this case, the, the latency of the processing is a key challenge for this type of lighting. So the different type of LED headlamps. So there are different types of, uh, of headlamps uh, depending on the resolution. So the first type is that there is uh, only one pixel, so uh, no ADB uh, functionality, so only one pixel. Uh, that could use a standardized headlighting module that could be uh, uh, used to, to reduce uh, as well the uh, development cycles uh, of headlamps. Uh, a second level of this type of headlamp is the uh, S matrix with a, a first uh, level of resolution using a single row LED array. Then we have the uh, P matrix uh, type of headlamp. Uh, with multiple LED arrays and a high resolution matrix headlamps that could use, uh, that could enable the highest uh, number of pixels and using technologies such as DMD uh, or mini micro LED. If we look more in detail uh, regarding uh, the resolution, we have tried to put in this table the positioning of Tiawad, so this is a non-exhaustive list of, uh, of Tiawad and products. So you can find it here, the, uh, the, the, the first uh, line on the, on, the, on the bottom side of the slide uh, with only one pixel. So it is uh, the basic LED headlamps with only one pixel. Then we have a, a second level uh, of headlamps with the S matrix between two and 20 pixels. Then we have the P matrix between 21 and 1000 pixels and high resolution matrix headlamps between 1000 pixels and 1.3 megapixel. And when uh, displaying here the different products uh, from tier one uh, and their roadmap, we clearly see that uh, the, the, the trend is to go higher in resolution uh, and that the uh, the, the, the headlamps uh, with only one pixel uh, will be uh, used only for entry level cars uh, as the cost of these uh, headlamps will be uh, will be limited uh, compared to a headlamp with a much higher resolution. In terms of roadmap, uh, we see here uh, the evolution of LED headlamps from full LED uh, application uh, in uh, in 27, um, and then we had uh, different technologies. So uh, after the LED matrix in 2013, uh, we saw a combination of LED and uh, a laser booster uh, for very uh, long uh, distance viewing in 2014, uh, mostly with uh, BMW. Uh, this is expected to evolve. Uh, using uh, a combination of laser 
and NEMS scanner to achieve a resolution of 10,000 pixels. Uh, in the same time, there was also uh, a, a trend to develop headlamps uh, based on LCD. Uh, this was made with HELA in the past, but uh, this technology was abandoned. Uh, more recently, Stan Lesh saw some, uh, some interest in this technology, but the, the future of LCD technology is uh, uncertain and uh, uh, almost, uh, almost dead as nobody is, uh, is working uh, on it anymore. The, the main uh, future of the LED technology will be uh, to reduce the size of the uh, LED uh, itself uh, and, uh, and put this LED into arrays uh, and, and we will find uh, arrays of uh, 25,000 pixels with mini LED and we could think about 1,000 uh, pixels with micro LED uh, in, the next, uh, in the next 10 years. It's also interesting to uh, discuss about uh, the integration of, light, of, uh, of sensors into headlamps uh, and in particular the, the integration of LiDAR. Um, here it's the comparison uh, of LiDAR integration uh, between the headlamp and the bumper and you can see that in, a, in, a, in, in these cases the integration, the position of the, uh, the LiDAR into the headlamp uh, is uh, is better to uh, to detect uh, objects earlier. Uh, this is the case for for the crossword on the uh, top left of the of the slide, and also to detect uh, let's say pedestrian when a car is following another car. Uh, the, we have the same result uh, if we compare it uh, with a lidar position on the windshield uh, or on the roof. Uh, so this is for the advantage of uh, of a lidar position into headlamps, but the drawbacks is that also you you double the cost of the lidar because you will integrate uh, two lidar uh, instead of one lidar uh, if it's positioned on the on the roof or on the bumper. It's interesting to see that we see uh, many partnerships uh, between uh, lidar suppliers and tier one. Uh, we have monitored more than 10 uh, partnerships. Uh, today, this is still at R&D level and there is no uh, OEM uh, implementing uh, such type of sensors into headlamp yet. Uh, uh, this is expected mostly for the highest level of autonomy, uh, but today with level two or level three of uh, automated driving system, uh, there is no need to integrate LiDAR uh, into headlamps. In terms of market forecast, uh, in 2021, uh, the, uh, the, the automotive lighting market uh, was about $31 billion. Uh, we front lighting represented two thirds of the, uh, of the market, uh, followed by rear lighting. And in 2027, we expect that this market will increase up to $42 billion at a KGR of 5%. And still, the uh, the, uh, the front lighting will represent more than two thirds uh, of the market. Uh, clearly, a new application with uh, grill illumination or lit logo uh, are witnessing the uh, the highest uh, growth rates. So, a few takeaways to uh, to conclude my uh, my talk. So. Uh, for a long time, the body lighting was limited to, uh, let's say, functional application. Uh, now we see more and more uh, application uh, linked to uh, personalization or, or lighting signature. Uh, and, and this is coming with the development of electric vehicles. And uh, it could also be used for the uh, automated uh, vehicles to, uh, to have uh, a special light communica communicating to, uh, to other road users when the car uh, is in uh, automated driving mode. Um, in terms of technology uh, for the rear side, uh, OLED could be used uh, to have uh, a higher uh, level of personalization uh, for, for the user, but it will remain to high-end cars. Uh, for, for this type of, uh, of um, communication, mini-LED or micro-LED uh, 
uh, will be used to increase the resolution of rear combination lamps and will be more affordable uh, for OEMs and tier ones. For headlamps, uh, the resolution is increasing uh, very fast. The highest resolution possible is above one megapixel uh, based on DMD technology. Uh, but other technology are being developed uh, based on the micro LEDs. Uh, this is quite promising, uh, but there are still some challenges related to thermal, imagine, thermal management that need to be solved. And, and thanks to the uh, size resolution of LED modules, it could be possible to integrate sensors inside the headlamps. Uh, but today, this is uh, still at R&D level and, and will be used only for, for the highest level uh, of automated driving features. So thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, write it directly in the chat uh, or send it to, uh, to me by email. Thank you very much for your clear technical and market presentation, Pierrick. Let's give the floor to Wilfried Theron, Department Director at System Plus. He will tell us more about electronic module and structures and cost breakdown of LED matrix headlights. Wilfried, this is your turn to speak. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, hello, everybody. I am uh, Wilfried Theron, and uh, in this part of the presentation, I will uh, present you the internal structures and the, the cost breakdown of uh, uh, LED matrix headlight. Um, I will uh, illustrate uh, this uh, presentation using a concrete uh, case uh, with the IQ light system developed uh, by uh, Ella, Ella for uh, Volkswagen. Uh, it is a LED matrix light that uh, adapt, adapts uh, the light flow according to the driving conditions. Uh, it's use an interactive uh, light control based on the information got from uh, different systems, such as uh, the front cameras. Uh, I, say the, I said um, Kerik previously, but there is also GPS data, uh, the speed and the steering angle of the car, for example. Uh, the, the main advantages of uh, this system are that it uh, reacts when uh, other vehicles are in front of the car to avoid uh, avoid the dazzling of the rain bin. Um, it uh, includes uh, a bar glare and a cross glare on the uh, uh, white roads. Uh, it's also reduced the distracting uh, reflections of uh, the headlight on uh, every reflected surfaces like uh, the, the road, uh, road signs, for example. Um, to do the um, the interactive light control function, uh, each uh, light include a matrix of uh, individually controlled LEDs. Uh, in fact, there are in reality two matrices of LEDs, one matrix uh, dedicated for the DPD light, also called the low bin, and there is also another matrix of LED for the main bin or the high bin. Uh, the low bin module has an electronic board including uh, 48 LEDs. And the, the eight bin module has an electronic board with uh, 27 LEDs uh, to bring the additional light needed for the eight beam. Uh, each uh, eight light also includes other modules uh, for the function of uh, daytime running or uh, direction indicators that use uh, also uh, LEDs. That means that in total, for each ID light, there is uh, 128 LEDs for this uh, specific case. Um, actual, uh, actual System Plus, uh, one of uh, our main activities is uh, to do the teardowns and uh, the cost estimation of uh, innovating electronic modules uh, that can be used uh, for uh, consumer application, industrial application, and of course for aut automotive application. And that's why we have uh, analyzed uh, the heat light of the Volkswagen Prarec. Um, the heat light is composed with uh, different electronic modules, including LEDs uh, for the high beam, the low beam, uh, the day driving modules, and the 
return a signal module. Uh, we can see that uh, these modules are developed and manufactured by uh, Forvia ELA here. Uh, and uh, these uh, LED modules need, need uh, to, uh, to have supply and control uh, for the electrical power to, uh, to supply the, the LEDs. Um, and here we can see that uh, there is also electronic modules from uh, other uh, manufacturers like uh, Continental and uh, Mitsu Mitsubishi Electric to, uh, for the light control unit and for the LED power stage. So, uh, in uh, each head light, uh, we can count that there is a total of 12 electronic modules uh, representing uh, 15 electronic boards and uh, a total of uh, 970 electronic components uh, for this kind of system. Uh, in uh, this page, we can see the, the internal structure, the inside structure of uh, the I-Bin module. Uh, it uh, includes uh, the different electronic boards uh, with the LED matrix and also several parts like the heat sink and uh, the, the fan also to dissipate the heat produced by the LEDs. Uh, there is also uh, the lens module and the optic diffuser and the light guides to diffuse the light of the LEDs. And there are also several other parts to support and fix all this, these parts together to, uh, to fix the, the complete module. Uh, in this page, we can see the, the main electronic board of the IBIN module. And uh, on the center of the board, we can see the 27 LEDs, uh, probably from OSRAM. And uh, we can see also the three integrated circuits from uh, uh, Texas Instrument. These uh, uh, integrated circuits are LED matrix manager that are able to uh, turn on or off the uh, up to uh, 12 parallel connected LED uh, by using uh, bypass switches. And uh, all these uh, electronic components are soldered on a printed circuit board uh, with the dimension of uh, uh, 99 per uh, 70 millimeter, which has the particularity to have uh, an, intern uh, uh, an internal uh, copper uh, layer with a thickness of uh, one, uh, one millimeter. Inside the, inside the the PCB, we can see the, the cross section on the on the image here. Uh, in this page, it is uh, the main electronic board of the low bin module. Uh, we can see that there is uh, uh, 48 LEDs, probably from uh, Nikia, and uh, also uh, it uses the same. Uh, LED matrix manager from Texas Instrument. But here the quantity is uh, four integrated circuits instead of uh, the three for the IB module that we have seen uh, previously. Uh, the, the board of uh, this module is uh, different because the component here are soldered on an IMS. It's a, an insulated metal substrate with uh, two copper layers and um, a copper plate of one millimeter uh, thickness uh, below it. We can see also the, the cross section on the left. Uh, in terms of uh, manufacturing cost estimation, here we can see a first, uh, first breakdown. Uh, we have to note that uh, when we speak about the manufacturing cost, uh, we take into account only the direct cost, including the bill of material, uh, that means the list of all the components, and the assembly cost. And uh, we exclude here all the indirect costs, like the R&D cost, the selling and administrative cost, and also the profit margin. Here, it's only direct, direct cost. Uh, we have estimated uh, a total for the manufacturing cost of 175 US dollars for all the electronic modules 
uh, included in one headlight. And we can see in uh, this uh, breakdown that the high beam module and the low beam module represent uh, around 54% uh, uh, of the total of uh, the electronic uh, cost. Yeah. Uh, here we have uh, another breakdown, but dedicated only to the bill of material and uh, bill of material with a uh, breakdown by uh, component type. And uh, we can see here that the LEDs uh, represent up to 25% of the material cost and uh, the mechanical parts, uh, including all the lenses, uh, the optics, the diffuser, represent 33% of the uh, bill of material cost. And uh, now we have a, a last, a last breakdown where we uh, uh, present uh, the um, semiconductor cost by supplier. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, the LEDs and LEDs comp uh, controller with uh, different manufacturer name like uh, Nikia, Osram, Texas Instrument, and Luminet represent up to 70% uh, of the semiconductor value for the different electronic modules. So uh, that's uh, the end of uh, this presentation about the internal structure and the cost breakdown of uh, the LED matrix in light. Of course, if you want uh, more details and uh, deeper analysis of the different modules shown in this presentation, you can get access to them in uh, our website. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much, uh, Wilfried, for your uh, very le relevant presentation. We will uh, conclude uh, this webcast with a presentation of Olivier Andrieu, Mechatronic System Architect at Piseo. Olivier will present us an in-depth technical analysis of a recent headlamp from the Volkswagen ID3. This is a concrete example of the existing technologies for automotive applications. Olivier, the word is yours. Okay, thank you, David. So uh, I will effectively complete this uh, webcast with a presentation of what I can say, uh, what I can call a, a new type of report that we are uh, launching now, the is to, to present uh, in-depth technical and performance analysis of uh, headlamp and of, of the ID3 uh, headlamp of a Volkswagen car. Uh, <clears throat> reason of such a report is that, uh, can be said in three points, that um, we have seen, and it has been discussed previously, that the integration of the LED technologies has given automotive lighting manufacturers the opportunity of uh, strong differentiation with new designs and functionalities. Uh, the other point is that the automotive headlamps are subject to many technical and aesthetic constraints, um, allowing um, multiple architectures and optical uh, solutions. And therefore, we think that uh, OEM and Tier 1 and Tier 2 also are looking for accurate technical and performance uh, insight of commercial devices um, in order to consolidate their own product uh, strategies. So uh, this report, um, this analysis report about the ID3 uh, headlamp is the very first of a kind of, uh, that will help the community of people involved in the um, design and uh, headlamp design and manufacturing uh, to better understand uh, the solution provided by the, um, the automotive, the major automotive lighting actually. So. We are proposing uh, teardown and reverse engineering of this uh, headlamp, which is supported by um, performance characterization that we have done um, on, a, on a sample um, of, uh, of headlamp. Um, so we make cross analysis, and uh, that's the way to uh, propose a statement on product design and performance also. Uh, this report relies on uh, PZO and uh, A2 Mac 1 capabilities, uh, getting what I can say a unique uh, um, uh, complementarity. That is, uh, PZO is an independent innovation center involved in photonic system, and we perform usually technical uh, or performance analysis of LED systems and LED headlamps now. 
uh, A to Micron is in the field of, of automotive benchmarking and can be uh, as supported PZO in providing access to the vehicle and to the setup. Um, uh, the setup. So uh, the report contains a lot of uh, things um, we'll present in this presentation. Um, some extract or some uh, topics um, uh, more linked in with the electronic architecture, uh, generally speaking. Uh, so this headlamp uh, is um, uh, supporting different features. So uh, low beam, adaptive, bright beam. beam. Um, it supports also uh, uh, what we can say uh, I beam, extended range I beam to be uh, to be accurate. Uh, cornering beam uh, and also the um, uh, linear uh, signature with um, um, day running light and position lamp and turn indicator lamp also. Uh, so all these um, uh, the the headlamp is based on all these modules. Uh, that have been described accurately in the report. I will uh, focus more um, on the on the um, uh, most important beam, which is the low beam with the ADB uh, beam. This um, this um, module uh, is based on a strip LED matrix technology, uh, uh, consisting to have a single LED in a row. As, uh, present, as mentioned uh, Pierre just before. Um, this, um, the, the low beam is produced uh, through a first set of LED, seven LED to be uh, accurate, uh, seven LED uh, placed in front of a collimator system. Um, this uh, source, light source system, um, is projected uh, on the road through a lens, which is, which is put it in front of the module. Uh, and uh, on the same module, there's also the, uh, the LDB uh, light sources uh, consisting of 11 LEDs that are plugged on, uh, on uh, another uh, PC board. Uh, all that is also projected on the road through the same lens. So it explains the schematic that you have on the top of the, of the slide where you can see the projection of the uh, low beam uh, effect and the projector, the projection, if needed, of the separate uh, segments, eleven segments uh, projected on the top uh, above the high beam, the low beam projection. You can see on the figures on the build uh, um, uh, bottom left the complexity of such a module, which is not alone. That is, the, this uh, by matrix projection module is linked to the to the lens, which is with handled by a uh, uh, quite complex system uh, supporting decorative uh, decorative lighting effect on the uh, on, on the peripheral. Um, so we have a detail in the report uh, the interaction between the LED the optics uh, system and uh, and the functionality uh, with a large uh, quite large details. Uh, which has been, let me say, confirmed by the um, the experimental or the measurement that we have done on uh, on, uh, on a sample. Um, focusing on the electronics, so we have um, uh, stated that the, um, the um, PCB uh, or the LED uh, used for this uh, low beam projection and also high beam uh, projection are uh, LED, CSP LEDs from uh, Nietzsche. So we have uh, identified the reference. Uh, reason for that is that uh, reason for using CSP uh, package, so close, um, uh, uh, small size package, is that uh, it is very important for controlling the um, uh, the, the, the size of the beam and the, the link between the optics and the source to have very small uh, light sources and uh, very close to uh, each to the other. Uh, so we have analyzed also the interfaces between the board and the rest of the optical architect optomechanical architecture, uh, taking into account the expected tolerance between the uh, between the, the support the heatsink. The, and the optical device uh, and, uh, and the PCB. Uh, this is the, this kind of figure that you can see 
uh, just below the, the build of the, of the PCB. Um, by the way, um, the, um, I have taken another example, which is a cornering beam, uh, which is based on another uh, LED uh, package, which is uh, a package from Osram, uh, Oslon Black Flat, which is quite well known in the community of uh, headlamp manufacturers. Um, we have identified also other uh, critical points uh, regarding the, the assembly and the architecture and the interface is also between the, uh, the, the, the PCB, the heat sinks and the other uh, uh, mechanical features. Um, so to complete this um, architecture analysis, uh, show for these two examples, we have done performance measurement uh, using um, making uh, tests in homologation conditions. Uh, it consists to uh, to put the the headlamp on a goniophotometer, a type a type goniophotometer, in order to reproduce the intensity profile um, emitted by the by the by the headlamp and to evaluate if the projected beam is um, as expected, so ex expected from homologation point of view, as expected from um, uh, conformity point of view, and as expected also uh, looking on the architecture. We have tested uh, three functions, so the low beam itself, the low beam with the adaptative driving beam, so with the, um, and also the low beam with the adaptive driving and the extending range, which is the full uh, high beam uh, that you can um, uh, comply from this uh, from this car. Um, you can see on the picture the um, relevant diagram. Uh, uh, we, we can uh, get from this uh, measurement and uh, that has been um, uh, analyzed uh, in order to link the performance with the, the architecture. For instance, you can uh, state that there is a small blue line on the interface between the low beam and the, and the dark area. Uh, which is uh, the consequence of the optical architecture uh, playing with uh, a lens and a collimator system. That's, um, that, that's uh, uh, quite normal to have this kind of chromatic effect. And uh, but it's also good to uh, see on this headlamp that this chromatic effect has been uh, well reduced by um, by a lot of uh, uh, details on the design of the optical uh, structure. Um, one view on the performance is this kind of table, so I will not comment exactly the table, but uh, what to have uh, to understand is that um, from homologation point of view and conformity also, uh, it is request to get a sufficient value, a sufficient level on uh, singular points uh, that are listed in the table, uh, about uh, 15 or 20 uh, singular points. Uh, usually, uh, looking on um, a standard product that you can find on the market, uh, you can expect to have a good level in uh, uh, to um, uh, associated to conformity requirements that are not the same as the level that you are um, uh, what is required for homologation. So usually, you can observe a good compliance with conformity. But what it is what it is for interesting is that this headlamp is also uh, compliant with the homologation, homologation requirement that are full, um, uh, that are um, uh, more um, difficult uh, to reach. So we are in front of, um, let me say, well-designed uh, um, headlamp able to fulfill all the requirements uh, and maybe better as uh, we have uh, uh, stated that the homologation level is, um, is rich even with a standard product. Um, other perspectives has been deployed in this report. Uh, one perspective is to look on the uh, appearance. Uh, for instance, uh, having a judgment or statement 
uh, on the fact on the using of um, um, uh, plastic solution and uh, to to have an optical solution also uh, to have a good appearance of this uh, high uh, technical system. For instance, uh, all the system is done to avoid to see the detail, uh, the electronic, the, de the detail of the electronics and uh, of people inside the, inside the modules. Uh, for instance, you can see that the PCB have uh, a black uh, coating on the surface, which is good for um, avoiding to see too much detail in the uh, in the system. Uh, so this kind of details have been fully detailed uh, so in the report uh, for all the for all the modules. One other perspective uh, is the. Uh, the assembly uh, solution uh, and uh, the alignment process. Uh, so we have decrypt, decrypted um, the way to um, uh, arrange the modules uh, between them, and also uh, in the in the headlamp to be sure that we have a good projection at the right place. Uh, so. It's not very easy to see, but um, that's the fact is that there's a complete system, cinematic system with different liner motors, with different rotating motors that can be controlled uh, in uh, assembly factory that of the headlamp, in that can be controlled also in the assembly factory of the car, and that can be controlled uh, after that in the uh, by the user of the car. Uh, so this cinematic has been detailed also uh, and explain uh, the um, the quite good level of performance that we have stated during the measurement. Um, let me uh, conclude with some uh, some kind of conclusion, some kind of key find key findings uh, regarding this uh, this headlamp. So. Looking on the modules, looking on the contents of the headlamp, we have um, we have seen um, a high quality product. Uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, this is confirmed by the photometric performance. Uh, this is confirmed by the fact that um, we have observed sophisticated optical solution uh, with a lot of details showing that the um, uh, the, the optical system has been um, as uh, driven uh, the, the, the architecture and the design choice uh, inside the car. Um, and this, um, this choice also have taken into account some details like the appearance, like the, uh, the way to assemble light, like the, 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 the control of the light and the chromaticity also. Um, this solution is based on um, strip, uh, striplet modules, uh, one for a low beam, one for uh, ADB. Uh, this is, um, what we can say that this is a matrix technology, a single row matrix technology, um, but it, it can appear slow compared to uh, uh, existing ADB uh, technology uh, in high range in high range vehicles, but we, in our mind, this is a, a step level for this function uh, that has been taken by Volkswagen uh, and uh, supported by uh, DLS. Um, okay, so uh, as I said, so optical uh, devices are based on a good quality, and I also take talk about the chromatic effects. Just regarding the electronic solution, we have stated that the um, solution are not fully uh, optimized, uh, so nothing to say about the late choice, which is completely valuable, but we consider that the implementation on the board is um, something that can be optimized regarding the diversity, regarding the, uh, the, the thermal behavior, regarding the um, and the, uh, the, 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 the basic architecture, the interface is between the, the board and the, um, uh, and the mechanical elements, uh, let me say. Um, so 
this um, this report is more detailed than what I said. What, what I've said for sure. Um, we uh, we plan to uh, make other reports like that. So making analysis, uh, uh, in-depth analysis uh, of um, the design with the uh, performance uh, performance analysis. Uh, that's um, uh, uh, and uh, we, we hope that this kind of reports will have a good success uh, uh, later. So thank you for your attention and uh, waiting for your questions. Thank you very much, Olivier, for your uh, nice presentation. We have a few questions and uh, we will. Uh, begin to answer them right now. The first question is uh, for Pierrick. Pierrick, could you give us uh, more insight on the upcoming technologies for front lighting? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, so I've talked about uh, high resolution uh, headlamps and uh, since uh, a few years we have seen um, high resolutions based on DMD to achieve a resolution up to 1.3 megapixels. Uh, but clearly, clearly, we know that some LED suppliers uh, are developing uh, modules uh, with a resolution between uh, 16,000 to 25,000 uh, uh, pixels, depending on the suppliers. Um, there are players like uh, Osram, Luminates, Nichia, uh, or Samsung uh, working on such type uh, of modules. Uh, with the starts of production schedules between 2023 and, and 2024. Uh, also, this type of module uh, will include uh, an LED driver, uh, but the, uh, the optical part uh, will be the, uh, the responsibility of the tier ones. The size of uh, this LED is mostly uh, mini LEDs, uh, as the size of this LED is between 50 to, um, to 100 micrometer. Uh, while uh, macro LED, as we consider it for display application, are more in the range between 2 uh, to 10 uh, micrometers. And uh, in terms of, uh, of optics, there is also uh, some evolution here, uh, as micro lens uh, array, so uh, MLA, uh, is a new uh, approach compared to the use of standard lens uh, and start to be implemented by some OEMs like Lucid uh, or Genesis. And uh, the, the main advantages uh, of this uh, micro lens array uh, are mostly related to, uh, to the styling, uh, to give more freedom uh, in the shape of the, the DRL or the, uh, the ADB module, uh, and give more compactness of the lighting module. Uh, and you can see, you can, uh, see that uh, some, some players like uh, uh, Hela as a tier one or uh, SUS Micro Optics uh, as a lens manufacturer uh, are working on the topic. Right, thank you very much. And second question is for Wilfried. For um, lighting headlamps, there are different uh, systems from different and various manufacturers. Who is doing the final assembly? Uh, yes, we have seen that uh, there, are, there are different uh, different manufacturers uh, with uh, for the ILA for the the main mo module, of course. Uh, we have seen that they are also Continental and uh, Mitsubishi. But uh, the final assembly is done by uh, by uh, by ELA, of course. Yes. Um, a second question for you, Wilfried. What is the difference between uh, the manufacturing cost that you calculate and the selling price uh, of the spare part bought from a car retailer, for example? Ah, yes. Uh, there is a, a big difference between the, the manufacturing, manufacturing cost and the selling price. Uh, essentially, if the part is uh, bought directly from a, a part uh, dealer or a car dealer, uh, because when we do the cost calculation, we do it for uh, a quantity of 1 million units. And uh, uh, we speak about manufacturing costs, that means that it is uh, mainly the cost of the bill of material, the list of all the components, and the assembly of uh, this component on the electronic boards. And, uh, the, the, and for also the, the different module, 
Um, that means that in one side we have a quantity of 1 million units and from the car dealer uh, it is possible to buy a part of a quantity of one, <laughs> one unit. So uh, that uh, explains uh, uh, essentially the, the differences. And then uh, in the car dealer when we bought a part uh, there is a uh, all the indirect costs that are taken into account also, R&D, uh, administration, selling cost, transportation, uh, margin of course, and so on. So that's why there is a, a big difference between this calculation. Thank you very much, Wilfried. And uh, a last question uh, for uh, Olivier. Did you assess the, the robustness and the reliability of the headlamp that you presented? Um, well, we, we have uh, made an analysis of uh, different, uh, all the components and interfaces. And by the way, we have um, uh, made some, uh, some, some assessment on the, 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 the strong points and the weak points of the, of the headlamp. So that can be relied to um, an evaluation of the robustness and reliability. Okay, thank you very much. So the webcast is now ending. Thanks for um, our three speakers for their time and their analysis. Let me remind you that you will soon receive the email with the link to the recorded session. However, please note that you can already uh, have access to the presentation uh, and the PDF file. Uh, just uh, download it from the resources section of the platform at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I'm also pleased to remind you that you can find all our products, reports, uh, monitor teardowns on our website yallgroup.com. This is our new website, so do not forget to create your account on this new website to get the latest news of the industry. If you have additional questions, feel free to send us an email. You have uh, all the, the requested information in this presentation. I hope that uh, you enjoy soon uh, another webcast from uh, your development. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have a safe uh, end of day. Goodbye and take care.